Hello and welcome back to Linear Algebra, the video series where we talk a lot about eigenvectors and eigenvalues. And in today's part 63, we continue this topic by talking about the so-called spectral mapping theorem. This is very helpful in the case that you transform a matrix and that you want to know what happens to the eigenvalues. However, of course, before we go into the details, first I want to thank all the nice people who support the channel on Steady, here on YouTube, on Patreon or by other means. And please don't forget, as a supporter, you can download the book version of this video course. Okay, then let's start discussing the spectral mapping theorem. And we start with the motivation where we consider an eigenvector x. And this should be an eigenvector for the square matrix A. And please recall, as always, we consider a complex valued matrix. Simply because the associated eigenvalue lambda could be a complex number. Indeed, this is important to remember, all this eigenvalue theory is much nicer when we deal with complex numbers. Okay, so this is the assumption here and you already know what this means. Namely, we have the important eigenvalue equation, which reads like ax is equal to lambda x. So we know the matrix operation for eigenvectors is very simple because it's only scaling. And now it's no problem at all multiplying both sides with the matrix A again. And of course we do that from the left hand side, so we have A times AX here and A times lambda X there. And now we can use the fact that the matrix multiplication is associative. This means here on the left hand side we can simply write A squared times the vector x and on the right hand side we can pull out the lambda factor. Hence there we have lambda times ax. However we know by the eigenvalue equation that ax is simply lambda x. Therefore now we can conclude that x is also an eigenvector for the matrix a squared. And by our calculation the associated eigenvalue is simply lambda squared. Okay, so this result is important to remember because now we could do the same calculation again. And then we would conclude that also a cubed has x as an eigenvector. The only thing we have to do again is to change the eigenvalue. However, you see it's not complicated at all to find the associated eigenvalue. In fact, we can show by induction that we get this result for every natural power of a. The only thing to remember here is that the power m transforms the eigenvalues. Hence, if you know eigenvalues of a, you immediately know eigenvalues of the powers of a. And since this calculation holds for every natural power m in n, we can formulate this for polynomials as well. And this is exactly the spectral mapping theorem we will now discuss. So you already see, it will tell us what happens with the spectrum of a matrix under a map. And for our context here, this map will be a polynomial P. And as always, everything is complex valued, so we map C into C. And the variable for the polynomial we can call Z. And moreover, you know every polynomial can be written with coefficients. Hence we have Cm times Z to the power M, and then we just reduce the power until we reach the last coefficient c0. So you see this is a general polynomial with degree m. And now corresponding to this polynomial p and the matrix A we will define a new matrix. And this new square matrix we simply call p of A. So formally we simply put the matrix A into the polynomial. This means instead of the variable z we now have the matrix A. So we use the same powers and the same coefficients. And there of course it's important that all these operations here are well defined matrix operations. And the only thing one has to adjust here is the constant term at the end. Of course we can't add a complex number to a square matrix so what we need here is the identity matrix included. So we have the constant C0 times the n times n identity matrix. Therefore you should remember what we get out here is again a square matrix of size n times n. Moreover, please note the whole thing is also well defined, which means if you rewrite this polynomial you will get out the same matrix. Okay, 
So now we know what it means when we put in a matrix into a polynomial. And with that we can state the spectral mapping theorem. And as promised, this one will tell us what the spectrum of P of A is. Namely, it's completely determined by the spectrum of the matrix A. This means we go through all lambda coming from the spectrum of A. And then the only thing we have to do, as you might expect from the motivation, is that we have to put in lambda into the polynomial. Hence, this here is the set of all complex numbers written as P of lambda. And there you can conclude, if the set spectrum of A has n elements, then this set has at most n elements. So for example, for a constant polynomial, this will be only one element. Okay, there we have it. This result here is what we call the spectral mapping theorem for polynomials. And indeed, it can be generalized for more functions than just polynomials. However, then you really have to explain what it means to put a matrix into the function. Of course, for polynomials that was not a big problem and that's the reason we formulate the spectral mapping theorems for polynomials. And moreover, it's also not so hard to prove this one. So now for the proof, we have to show a set equality, which means we have to show two inclusions. Now indeed, this inclusion here, that the spectrum of P of A can be only bigger than this set on the right hand side, we have already shown before. Of course, some details are missing, but you already see the idea. So we only need to do an induction and we have to put in the additions of matrices as well. However, this is not a big problem and therefore I want to focus on the other inclusion. There we will show that the right hand side can only be bigger. More precisely, it means if we take an element from this set, we can show that it also lies in this set on the right hand side. Now, in order to do that, let's start with a simple case where we have a constant polynomial. This means P of Z is always equal to C0. Hence, it's a very simple polynomial and there we should be able to show the implication. This means we take a lambda tilde from the left hand side and will show that it also lies in the right hand side. And now this is not hard to show because being an eigenvalue means it's a zero of the characteristic polynomial. More precisely, determinant P of A minus lambda tilde identity matrix is equal to zero. However, now P of A is very simple because it's just a constant matrix. Indeed, it's C0 times identity matrix. And this means calculating this determinant is very simple. Without any problems, we immediately get it's the constant C0 minus lambda tilde to the power n. And this should be equal to zero, which means this lambda tilde is equal to the constant. And then we can conclude that lambda tilde lies indeed in the set on the right hand side simply because this set has only one element, namely C0. So you see, for the constant polynomial, we don't have any problems proving the equality. Therefore, obviously the hard work we will find in the second case. So now we assume that P is not constant and we will try a proof by contraposition. This exactly means that now we take an element that does not lie on the right hand side and then we want to show that it also does not lie in the left hand side. Therefore, now we assume that we take a complex number mu that does not lie in this set. And now this number we use to define a new polynomial. And this is not so complicated, we simply call it q and we write it as p minus mu. So it has the same degree as p and let's say this degree is m. And now let's say we know all the zeros of this q. And let's call them a1 to am. And since you already know the fundamental theorem of algebra, you know we have this factorization. And now please note, since we have a non-constant polynomial, we already know that this constant c here is non-zero. And the zeros a1 to am could be any complex numbers. However, they cannot be eigenvalues of a because otherwise mu would lie in this set here. Therefore, by the assumption of mu, we already know that every a does not lie in the spectrum of a. So we can write aj is not an element of the spectrum of a. 
And of course, this holds for every j from 1 to m. Okay, and now you know, this can be rewritten with the characteristic polynomial. This means if we put a j into the characteristic polynomial, we get out a number that is not zero. Okay, so we keep that in mind and now we go back to the beginning. So please recall, what we actually want to know is what the characteristic polynomial of Pa is. And now if we use our complex number mu inside it, we see that this is actually the polynomial Q. So what we have is the determinant of the matrix Q of A. And there, of course, we want to use our factorization. So let's put that into the determinant. And of course, instead of Z, we have everywhere A. Now please note, in order to make it shorter, here and in the following, I will omit the identity matrix. Therefore, please don't forget, every constant here carries the identity matrix with it. So again, what we have here is an n times n matrix. And the first thing we can do is to pull out the scalar c. However, by the properties of the determinant, we get out c to the power n. And moreover, we can also use that the determinant is multiplicative. This means we have a whole product of m determinants. Okay, and then you see, we have exactly what we want. We have a product where none of the factors is equal to zero. And this means the whole product is also not zero. And by our knowledge of the characteristic polynomial, we know that mu is not an eigenvalue. So we conclude that mu does not lie in the spectrum of Pa. And with that, our proof is finished, because that's all we have to do for a proof by contraposition. Hence, now you can believe that we have this nice spectral mapping theorem for polynomials. And in order to finish the video of today, let's look at a quick example. Namely, let's take a 2 times 2 matrix. There, it's not hard to calculate that this matrix A, 3, 2, 1, 2, has exactly two eigenvalues, namely 1 and 4. And now we can look at another matrix B, given as a polynomial of A. And we do it as 3 times A cubed, minus 7A squared, plus A, minus 2 times identity matrix. So it's a well-defined 2 times 2 matrix, and we can immediately get the spectrum of B now. The spectral mapping theorem just tells us that we have to put in 1 into this polynomial and 4. And now this is not a hard calculation, I can immediately tell you it's minus 5 and 82. So you see, using the spectral mapping theorem is a good thing to immediately get the spectrum of this matrix B. And we will look at more applications of this nice theorem in future videos. So I hope we meet again and have a nice day. Bye bye.